हेलो रिवन सो इन दिस वीडियो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द न्यूरो एनाटमी फॉर द फर्स्ट प्रॉफ एम बी बी एस स्टूडेंट्स सो न्यूरो एनाटमी इज़ द मोस्ट कंसाइज एंड द क्रिस पार्ट ऑफ द ग्रॉस एनाटमी सो देर इज़ नथिंग सो मच टू मग अप एंड न्यूरो एनाटमी फॉर्म्स द बेसिस ऑफ द न्यूरो सर्जरी विच इज़ अ टॉप रिवॉर्डिंग ब्रांच एज अ मेडिकल कैरियर सो एज अ फर्स्ट ईयर एम बी बी एस स्टूडेंट यू विल फाइंड दैट क्लिनिकल न्यूरो एनाटमी बाई द विश्राम सिंह इज़ वन ऑफ द मोस्ट प्रेफर्ड बुक्स बट इफ़ यू आर लुकिंग फॉर द मोर डिटेल कंसेप्ट दैन येस यू शुड गो फॉर द न्यूरो एनाटमी बाई दिस स्नेल्स एंड फॉर नाउ इन केस यू हैव कवर्ड अप योर सिलेबस फॉर द फाइनल एग्जाम और इवन यू हैवेंट स्टार्टेड येट देन आई हैव गॉट अ लिस्ट ऑफ द थिंग्स ऑफ द टॉपिक्स दैट यू शुड डू either these topics will be directly asked or these or the topics which are somewhat related to these topics they will surely be asked so if you will be writing an answer in a relative context then yes you will be scoring up a good amount of marks so let's begin first we begin with the brain stem which is consisting of the midbrain the medulla and the pons it serves the four major function like it provide the passage to the ascending and the descending tracts of the spinal cord then it contains the important autonomic reflex center which are associated to control the uh, respiration the heart rate and the blood pressure then it contains the reticular activating system which control the consciousness and it also contain the important nuclei of the last 10 cranial nerve from the cranial number 3 to the cranial nerve number 12 so this is the transverse section of the medulla at the level of the pyramidal decussation and this is the level that passes through the inferior half of the medulla and this is what it closely resembles to that of the spinal cord the decussation of the pyramidal tract this from the most important feature of the medulla at this level next is the transverse section of the medulla at the level of the sensory decussation and in this the gray matter the central gray matter this contains the hypoglossal nucleus the dorsal nucleus of the vagus and the nucleus of the tractus solitarius the hypoglossal nucleus here this occupies the ventro medial position close to the midline in the central gray part so now is the transverse section of the medulla at the level of the olives literally from dorsal to the ventral like two prominent structure first is the inferior cerebellar peduncle and the inferior olivary nucleus now moving on to the transverse section of the pons the first is the lower part of the pons and in the gray matter you will find it will contain a nuclei of the 6th the 7th and the 8th cranial nerve and nucleus of the spinal tract of the trigeminal nerve whereas in the white matter it will contain the two lamina sky the medial and the spinal and along with this it will also have the trapezoid body and the nuclear nuclear present next is the transverse section through the upper part of the pons and here the gray matter will contains the a motor and the principal sensory nuclei of the trigeminal nerve and the caudal part of the nucleus ciliaris whereas the white matter here it will contain the four lamina sky the medial the trigeminal spinal and the lateral trapezoid body and a nuclei will be absent here next is the transverse section of the midbrain at the level of the inferior colliculi here the gray matter the central gray matter it will contain the two nuclei nucleus of the trochlear nerve the mesial and the mesencephalic nucleus of the trigeminal nerve and the transverse section of the midbrain here and the superior colliculi here the central gray matter in each half will contain the two nuclei the oculomotor nerve nuclei and the mesial mesencephalic nucleus this mesencephalic nucleus this occupies the same position as in the lower part of the midbrain so these were the seven diagrams and out of these seven you will have to face a question from these either in your internals or the externals the next important question asked is about the ascending and the descending tract so this is the general diagram which depicts the ascending and the descending tract the descending tract that came that comes from the brain from the cerebral cortex or the midbrain and to the spinal cord this may include the cortico spinal tract that came from the cerebral cortex to the spinal cord and there is the tecto spinal tract that come from the tectum to the spinal cord 
or the from the red nuclei to the spinal cord that the rubrospinal tract or these uh, tract can ascend as well like to the like the spinothalamic tract to the thalamus then there is spinal tactile tract to the tectum part or the anterior uh, or the posterior spinocerebral tract to the cerebral cortex now this is the general diagram they show the transverse section of the spinal cord and here you will see that all these fibers they are generally arranged in it so you're not always asked by showing all these tracts but if you are prepared with this diagram then you can show any of the tracts at any of the level uh, but mostly asked is this that the corticospinal tract or the reticulospinal tract here you, you will uh, see in these diagrams and the other most important uh, other tracts pathway or the other tract that is asked is, is the lateral spinal spinothalamic tract or the anterior spinothalamic tract so you must be prepared with these when it comes to the ascending and the descending tracts and the next important question asked from this is the ventricular system of a brain. So this is general diagram that shows all of the three ventricles that are present in the brain, the third ventricle, the fourth ventricle here and the lateral ventricle as well. And out of these, the lateral ventricle is the most like question by the examiner and you must be knowing the two diagrams the first is the boundaries of the central part of the lateral ventricle that you will be drawing if a general uh, diagram of the lateral ventricle, uh, ventricle is asked but most commonly out of these even the fourth ventricles float that is also known as the rhomboid fossa the question comes with the same name a rhomboid fossa or the floor of the fourth ventricle this is asked so this is a must do diagram even if you are skipping the whole of the ventricle i think this is you must be prepared with uh, this thoroughly next comes the most anticipated question of uh, this um, part that is the blood supply and it, when it comes to the blood supply there is the actually the arterial supply and the venous drainage in uh, for the arteries that are supplying the brain these are this is the general diagram um, of the arteries supplying the brain and a particular question regarding this circle of villus is asked so in that part you will be drawing this diagram and you must be thorough be thorough with both of these the other question regarding us is the arteries over the surface of this cerebral hemisphere so on the so you should be prepared with this diagram at least on the inframedial part that is supplying and this is not as difficult because uh, the artery supplying the area is named after the area that is supplying so here you will see the frontal part is supplied by the frontal branches the parietal part is supplied by the parietal branches so the same way you have the name of the area uh, and that is given the name of the artery as well next is the venous drainage so you ha will be having two diagrams at least the first here is shown is the uh, these are the veins of the suprolateral surface of the cerebral hemisphere uh, and the other is the on the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere so there are sinuses the major sinus you will see the superior sagittal sinus then there is a trans transverse sinus sigmoid sinus this finally drains into the in internal jugular vein so this is the overall layout that how you must be prepared with the venous drainage so the next topic coming up here is the csf its circulation its secretion and this all can be depicted in this diagram if you are making this diagram then the examiner get what he is exactly looking for from the site of the formation of the csf in the choroid plexus of the lateral ventricle here to its absorption into this uh, superior sagittal sinus but in case if you are running out of time then here is the flow chart this is the flow chart that shows the circulation and absorption of the csf so you can make this as well then the other thing you need to remember about csf is its function it's how it nourishes how it supplies the metabolite how it acts as a shock absorber how it removes the toxic metabolites and it how it connects the pineal secretions to the pituitary gland 
So next important question coming up is the division of the cerebral hemisphere. And here is this suprolateral surface and this shows that the lobes are divided uh, of the cerebrum by the different sulci. The major sulci, they are named here like the central sulci or the periosteal sulcus. So these all they divide different lobes into different parts. And there are also the functional areas that you should know from the suprolateral surface in this image or in the next here it is the inferomedial surface and there also is numbering also here. So most of the uh, numberings you don't need to remember but yes there are some of the important numberings like you have to remember of the Broca's area or the motor areas, visual or the auditory areas. So their numbering you have to remember. Uh, but you don't need to remember of all of them so now here is the diagram of the thalamus this is actually a horizontal section of a thalamus and you will see the various nuclei and its three compartments that are divided by the internal medullary lamina and after this there is the relation in case the relation of the thalamus along with its some of the near structures or the internal capsule or the corpus striatum is asked so this diagram can be made and this diagram along with this flow chart here that shows the neural circuitry of the basal nuclei it, this is usually made in the question of the parkinsonism disease so if you make both of these in a question of the parkinson disease that is one of the expected question then this can fetch you a good amount of marks now at last comes the cranial nerves uh, their functional component as seen here for the vagus nerve or the course of distribution seen here like as in for the trigeminal nerve and here in this diagram for the facial nerve so by doing so you learn both the ways like the organs or the parts the nerve supply or how the neural supply of any nerve is distributed you have to remember this for the major nerves only and this will help you in a gross anatomy too. After all this when it comes to the clinical part there are very few cases you should be ready with. First is the upper motor neuron lesion and the, the lower motor neuron lesion and their differences as well as their short snort too. Second is the hydrocephalus and then is the Parkinsonism which we already discussed. So that's all you need to know for the neuroanatomy part. So please let us know your suggestions in the comment box below and also do subscribe to the channel for the more essential piece of information in the future. That's all for now. Thank you and take care.